Hey everybody, Jake Reichbart here. Today I'm going to share with you a lengthy lesson excerpt. So have your guitars ready and we're going to have some fun together arranging a song. Perhaps you've seen some of my many hundreds of solo guitar arrangements I have here on YouTube and the inspiration for these arrangements is right here behind me as you can see. I grew up with this with these vinyls and uh, I draw pretty much from any kind of style imaginable from the pop music of the past hundred years. Everything from Glenn Miller to Van Halen, Alan Holsworth to Motown, and pretty much anything in between. Beatles, I have perhaps uh, 25 Beatles song arrangements, 20 Steely Dan song arrangements, same for uh, Stevie Wonder, rock, hard rock, D Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and of course tons and tons of classic jazz standards from the 40s and 50s, bebop, dance tunes, movie themes. And if you want to learn how to arrange any of these songs for solo guitar, I can teach you. Just like the excerpt that you're about to watch, which comes from a lesson that runs about 90 minutes, I have nearly 200 additional titles and they are mostly song specific. I enjoy teaching through specific songs because I can show you hands-on how I approach arranging a song. What's nice about these lessons is that I don't just tell you do this and you're done, but rather I'll take you through three or four or five different ways to play the same passage. I'll work with you on dynamics, on articulation, and a hundred other things that you cannot just put to paper. As I mentioned, these lessons run approximately 90 minutes. The introduction, which runs usually 15 minutes, focuses on the right hand and rhythm. And in this introduction, I go through my three pillars of rhythmic arranging. The first principle being melody and bass only. The second being rhythmic arpeggiation. And the third, of course, the down stroke that I play with my right hand fingernails to produce that backbeat that everybody asks me about. Nevertheless, I do have two main method lessons. The first one, how to arrange any song for solo guitar running two hours, and also an introduction to fingerstyle guitar and solo guitar arranging running two hours and 40 minutes. The information about these lessons, the cost, my full lesson list, as well as a link to the full performance of the song that we're working on today is below in the information. So expand the information, take a look, and let's get started. My introduction uh, to the song and in fact by general performance of the song is meant to mirror the original Peter Frampton performance. It sounds of course different as I mentioned about the idea about interpreting for, for a single instrument, an entire band arrangement, let alone a vocal performance arranged for a solo guitar. But nevertheless, I feel that this, is, this mirrors uh, the introduction pretty well. And the very first fingering is quite a unique one in that it's way up there on the neck in the 10th position and I'm playing all using all four fingers to finger individual notes. Two of them are on the same fret and somewhere in there on the third string I, I have an open string as well. So from the bottom I have a G on the fifth string 10th fret, a D on the fourth string 12th fret, an open G, a B on the second string 12th fret, and also the D on the top string 12th fret. So, so the idea behind this fingering that it has the sound of a high note, so it's up the, up the neck, and yet it has an open string, which is an attractive sound to me, I guess. I like that sound of blended uh, fingered notes up on the neck with open strings. So again, from the bottom, G, D, another G, open on the on the G string, B and D on top. This chord to me is a D with the three in the bass, the three being the F sharp. And the way I play it is by using my first finger, I bend it kind of like this a little bit. Let's see if I can there, angle it so you can see. And I get more than one note on the same fret, but I leave it open so that underneath the finger, I can still pluck the open E string. So the notes from the bottom would be 
the F sharp on the 5th string, 9th fret, D on the 4th string, 12th fret, an E on the 3rd string, 9th fret, so that 1st finger is getting 2 notes, the F sharp and the E. Then my 2nd finger is playing the A note on the 2nd string, 10th fret, and then I have an open E on top. So again, I have a doubled note here. I got two E notes. Here I got two G notes, and two, here I have two E notes. It kind of makes the harmony sound more acoustic, strummy like, I guess, in my crazy mind. The next chord is an E minor, a very standard kind of fingering in the seventh position, except that I do with my first finger the same thing I just did the previous chord, which is say I don't play a full bar, I again let the open E string ring on top, and I bend my first finger to get this E on the fifth string, as well as the D on the third string, so the notes would be E on the fifth string. B on the 4th string, D on the 3rd string, and G on the 2nd string, and E on top, and now I can also throw in the bottom E, and to thicken the sound. The next two chords are identical fingerings on different frets. And these are triads in kind of an open voicing style. The first of these two is the D chord, so I play a D with my 1st finger, 5th fret, 5th string, along with the A on the 4th string, 7th fret, and an F sharp on the 2nd string, 7th fret, except, uh, well, and I play then the same shape moved down to the 3rd position now, so the notes are C, G, and E. Except that even while I'm playing this chord, and certainly this chord, I can still incorporate lightly the open strings, which are the G and E. Certainly in this position, now we're duplicating two notes. Here's a G on the fourth string, G on the third string, E on the second string, E on the first string. Not quite a 12 string guitar sound, but especially if you pluck them here and you let them ring over to to the next chord and then you, you strum them again. So it makes quite a, an attractive sound. Uh, why don't I sum up everything from the top? And uh, what you saw me do here is micro improvisation, I guess, which is just kind of, in this case, I kind of plucked the notes first and then added those strings. And there's a lot of little, if you know where the notes are, a lot of micro improvisation that you can do if you feel like it and if there's enough time for it. Next chord in the progression is a G add 9 with B in the bass. And this is in, in the second position, or almost really in the open position. I play the B with my first finger, fifth string, second fret, A with my second finger, third string, second fret, then D and G on top. It's a G chord, so the G triad is in there. And then you have the added ninth, which is the A, and it's just unusual that. Well, it's not so unusual, but it's not the root in the bass again, it's the 3, which is the B of G, which is a 3, excuse me, it's the B note, which is a 3 of the G chord. 
otherwise you'd play it like this. But I play it like this way to make for a descending bass line. So. A and D and then the song starts. So let's continue with the progression. And once again, I will sum up the entire introduction all the way up to the melody in just a moment. Just want to show you the chords as we as we go. So we had a G add nine with B in the bass. And now we have an A minor to D7, which is a 2-5. To the one G, which is going to be the one, all or the tonal center of the song and the beginning of, of the verse. But along the way, I play a little movement. To kind of make it move more. It's all about rhythm, really. It's not about some intricate chord voicings. It's really about making the song move rhythmically. So what I do here is I play the bottom A string. I also have the open G string and open E string. And then I have parallel intervals moving inside the key of G, starting with the E and the C. This by itself, A, E, G, C, and E, is a classic open position A minor 7 chord, which I'm sure we all know how to play. What I do now is move the fingered notes up diatonically up the scale, and that's why I was referring to the introduction where it would be very useful to know the notes in the key. All of these are still while the, it's an A minor chord rhythmically, and while you're moving, making those movements. It is okay for the other strings to ring open. You don't have to hit them all the time. Again, it's kind of, you know, adding too much spice to a food or something like that. You don't want to overdo things, but they're not avoid notes. You can incorporate them. I do this in a rhythmic manner. When I get here, which I'll get to in a second, that's to me already the D chord, the D7 chord. But anyway, what are those notes? So I said I was moving these parallel up the neck. So E, C, F sharp, D, these are on strings 4 and 2, G, E, A, and F sharp. All the while, you can also hit the A, like I said, and the G and E are also fine. The next interval up is yet another diatonic step up the scale so you'll play B and G on the same two strings 4 and 2 except that rhythmically the chord has changed to a D. I don't have to hit a D at that point although I could. Because if you keep playing the A all it will happen is musically it's, it's a D with an A in the bass. And since I'm about to immediately change my fingering, I just continue the movement up to up to this point. So So hitting the D is a little bit delayed rhythmically, but so what? So what is that movement? I hit the A on the first string, hammer to B, and play this voicing, which is very easy to play. It's just a bar across the upper five strings in the fifth position. It just happens to be the appropriate chord here, which to me is a, a D11. It's a kind of a D7 chord, but with a suspend, suspended sound. So it's not just a regular D7, but a D7 with a certain attitude to a certain sound to it. And again, the notes are D, G, C, E, and A. Another way to view it is C, a C triad, over D, and I also have the A on top. 
Now, during the time that I'm playing this chord, again, I have a little time before the melody comes in, so I do, I elaborate, I, I embellish a little bit, not for melodic or harmonic reasons. Those are the, just the tools to serve the rhythm. That's all it is about to me, is just moving the, the song rhythmically. So after I hit this, I can play a variety of little miniature or micro improvisation, which you'd really call, the technical term I think would be a fill. I'm exaggerating the effect on purpose so you can see all the different little things that you could do during this time. And again, it all stems from the knowledge of the key of G. If you know what where the notes are in the key of G, and if you are holding this position down, you can... And there's more ways to do it than just a bar. I can play behind the bar. I can play... I can play in this area too, but in this case, I just held the bar down. So one of the easiest things to do is to play that bar. And then with the three remaining fingers, improvise little melodies or intervals. And then, right when the time is right on the downbeat, hit that G chord. So I'll demonstrate from the top. I'll play the whole, the entire intro introduction up to this point very slowly. there was that much time to add that many improvised notes but it will come up later in the song so that's why I made that elaborate demonstration right there so one more time and then we'll move on <laughs> 